Hi, welcome to Touch by Prayer. I am so excited because today we're going into the garden. That's right. We're going into the garden of your heart. What's in the garden of your heart? Well, God has a lot of things planted inside there, but you know what sometimes creeps in are weeds. Let me tell you something. You got to get those weeds out, but you can't just pull a weed out slowly. No, no, no. You got to go deeper. You got to get to that root because once you get to that root, it can't come back because if you don't take the root, it can. My guest is Margot Fish Fishman ah, Jones and she's Gary Fishman's daughter who we love here on Touch by Prayer. He's been on so many times, interpret streams, incredible anointed papa. He's such a papa. He's my pop. I, he's my spiritual dad. Love him, love him, love him. And Margot carries the same stuff that her daddy carries, but just a little differently because she carries that, that love language of Jesus. I mean, she seriously carries it. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Margot Fishman Jones. Welcome to Touch by Prayer. I am super Hello. excited. This is going to be so much fun. This is going to be great. I have been waiting to get you on here because of the stuff you've been writing has just blessed my socks off. Great and stuff. I'm like, oh, we we so need to get her on Touch by Prayer. And I think I actually asked your dad. I'm like, all right, Gary, you got you to gotta get Mark on my show. He's like, awesome. you just got to call her. <laughs> to just like him that's awesome i i do and and you know it's funny because when he's come here my um my husband he does um he does gary in, in impersonations you know <laughs> because of course of course your dad always has like the jokes and um oh, yeah. and and because my husband worked in a comedy club he can kind of go back and forth with him <laughs> awesome oh awesome. uh, so awesome. it 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 is awesome okay so so you have a ministry, it's it's called In Pursuit of the Fire, and it's the fiery flame of Jesus that you yes. are trying to ignite and start fires inside of people. Yes. And what's really interesting is when we kind of talk, because we weren't quite sure about what we wanted to um, discuss, you started to talk about how you're so frustrated that there are so many people who are still stuck in places that all that needs to happen is they need a good weed whacking. They need to just get those, get the roots of bitterness or the roots of any type of hurts or wounding or um, jealousy or fear or um, abandonment, rejection, and the list just goes on. And you have just, we just had this conversation where you just kind of talked about how you just know that through your experiences that God has shown you that by getting rid of these roots, pulling out these weeds, that our garden can become so much stronger and beautiful. And it really can help us to walk into the destiny that God has prepared for us. Yeah, I have such a strong burden to share this with the body because before I learned how easy it is to deal with roots those weeds in our hearts. I used to pay all this money to get inner healing from so-called inner healing ministers. And in the meantime, we have the almighty God, the Holy Spirit inside of us. And so we could just deal with roots on our own. We don't have to go pay all this money. And yes, I love inner healing conferences. I love when people pray for me, for my heart to be healed, but we can do this on our own and we don't have to wait for somebody else to pray for roots with us. And so I just, I want to teach the body of Christ so much how simple this is that you can pray through a root right there, wherever you are, just right now, God can to totally free you of something you've been carrying since you're just a little child for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you've been carrying this deep pain in your heart and instantly God can set you free. And so it, should I share it right now? Just what I do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So this is what I do. I just, and you never go wrong with asking the Holy Spirit. And I just ask the Holy Spirit, what is the memory? What's the root? Let's say anger comes up in my heart. Okay. I ask God, what is the root to this anger? And I actually, I get excited whenever a bad emotion comes up because I'm like, oh, there's a root there to deal with. 
and it's at the surface. I actually get excited whenever I feel some kind of bad pull in my heart because I'm like, yes, because I have the tool to be able to get free of this. And Dennis Clark, who taught me how to do this, he always would say manifestation is good. Whenever I would have this bad feeling, it's a manifestation of the enemy. It's good because it reveals darkness that needs to come out. And I actually have the tool and it's so simple. So it's just asking the Holy Spirit for that memory. And he's just going to bring it up. Just go with the first memory that pops up. Just trust that it's the Lord speaking to you. And I actually just want to stop right here because this is how I learned how to see in the spirit was just by seeing these memories that would come up. And at first I was like, oh, this is not really the Lord speaking. And then I realized as I would pray through the root, that was truly God showing me that memory. And I realized, wait, I really do see in the spirit. And then visions that God would give me look just like the memories that would pop up. And then I learned how to see in the spirit so much clearer since learning how to do this. And so the Holy Spirit will give you a memory. Just go with that first one. And then in that memory, just release forgiveness not from you don't try to figure things out with your head don't try to say oh maybe it was when i was 15 years old this happened that no ask the holy spirit and go with it and just release forgiveness from your spirit and let jesus do all the work remember it's christ the forgiver that's doing all the forgiving you can't do this in your own strength there is nothing good in us apart from god so it's got to be the lord just flowing through you all you have to do is yield and say yes line up your will with the will of the father and say yes and so you just oh go ahead yeah i was just gonna say yeah i was just gonna say i think that's sometimes one of the biggest problems is that we can't we don't know how to yield i think yes. that that is one of the things and so people are saying well okay so i, I i'm trying i want to forgive but it yes. really is about surrender it's just about, okay, Lord, you, you do this, you know, help me to forgive, help me to forgive this. And just literally, it's almost like, it, it, it's just like taking this cup of bitterness or anger or unforgiveness and just taking the cup and just passing it to Jesus and just going, okay, yes. here you go. You, you well, take it. Dennis Clark, he would sit, he would call it dropping down. He says, you got to drop down. And so you get mm. out of your natural mind, natural reasoning. Whenever I feel a strong temptation, let's say to feel rejected or lonely or anything bad, angry, instead of just saying, oh, but look, they're rejecting me. They don't want me or whatever kind of torment would go up in the mind. Instead, I wait, I have to drop down where Jesus is just flowing through me. And I live, it's right above my belly where I experience it. I could feel a tension down in here. I guess you can't really see in the video, but down in here on top of my belly, I could feel when the gates close, when I'm tense, let's say I'm angry or, or worried about something. And you have to just loosen that up. Sometimes even relaxing my natural body, my muscles, laying down helps me to yield sometimes when I feel like I can't yield. And so in that moment of temptation, drink in Jesus Christ within you. Mm. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We have got to yield to let him live through us. He's in us, but we want him to live through us. He, we want him to shine from us. And so we have got to drop down and drink in the spirit. And I release on purpose when I, this is how I live in the spirit, not just once in a while, but we can actually stay there. If instead of living up here, we drop down to mm. our spirit man. And when I'm in a store, I release on purpose rivers of glory to overtake the whole store. And all of a sudden I'll feel fire just shoot up in my chest and the glory of God, like electricity. And we all experience it differently, but that's just what I experience. Or on purpose, if I feel anything towards somebody or even to test it out, I'll release rivers of glory to people. And if I feel like I can't release that river of, it's really a river of love, it's Jesus we're releasing, the, the, it, the love will just push right through it. It'll show me where I need to repent. But releasing rivers on purpose is such a powerful way to live in the spirit. And so one way to do this 
this is just part of it, is to release rivers of love and forgiveness in that person, to that person, place, or situation in that memory. And so I know I'm, I'm giving a lot of details, but it's really, really simple. And I'll give a really fast overview to show how simple it is. And at first it might seem like, oh, this is a little too much for me. I'm not used to it, but you get used to it. And I'm telling mm. you, it becomes like breathing when you really tap into this and practice this. And so when I first learned it on purpose for hours straight, I would just pray through all kinds of roots and the Lord would give me thing after thing. And I would get so free so quickly. It's incredible. And so in the memory, the first person, place or situation that you need to forgive, just release forgiveness, release forgiveness. A lot of you might need to forgive God. Maybe you have hurt. You're like, God, why did you let this happen? Why did you allow my child to get raped? Why was I abused? This is your fault. And you have so much pain inside. Just release forgiveness like a river to Jesus right now. Even though Jesus never did anything to harm you, he's perfect. He is perfect love and he's gentle and kind. But if you have any bitterness in your heart towards the Lord, face that bitterness and allow that river of forgiveness to flow to Jesus right now. And so in the memory, I release forgiveness and it's always a two way stream. I've noticed that it's never just one way. It's always two ways. And so after releasing forgiveness and the gauge is when it turns to peace. After it turns to peace, then receive forgiveness. Drink in forgiveness for anything that you've agreed with, with darkness. Maybe it's bitterness towards your mom for abusing you. Maybe it's bitterness towards your dad for leaving you. Whatever it is, um, whatever you took in, re just receive forgiveness. It's a two-way stream. And so, again, you ask the Holy Spirit for the memory. You release forgiveness and receive forgiveness till it turns to peace. And then whatever I repented of, whatever I received forgiveness for, I renounce agreements. You break agreements with loneliness. Mm -hmm. You break agreement with fear. And all it's so simple. Just say, I renounce you fear. I renounce all agreements that I made with the spirit of rejection. And I command rejection to get out of my life completely in Jesus' name. And so it's so powerful. Then I encounter God. Mm. Instead of the abuse that I went through in that, in that memory, God wants to replace that memory with Jesus, with rivers of Lord, whatever God wants to show you, encounter the Lord in that memory, let him replace the pain with his goodness, with heaven. He's going to take it, turn it around for his glory and for your good. He's there's always hope in God and you don't have to live in that prison of that bad memory. Jesus wants to set you free, but also turn it into a glorious encounter. And then the last thing that I do is I wait for the Lord to replace the lies with truth. And it's so powerful to not just hear the truth, but to speak out those words of truth and declare whatever he says. You are loved. Say, I am loved. Jesus says, I'm loved. I'm beautiful. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and speak it out of your mouth. It's powerful. And so I do this all the time. I do this so much. If I feel any kind of bad feeling come up, that's it. I just say, okay, God, what's the root to this? And if I feel that temptation really strong, I feel like I don't want to pray through the root. I want to keep giving into this anger right now, this agitation. Say, okay, I'm going to drop down and release Jesus, drink Jesus in. I'm going to live down in here. And I'm telling you, you can overcome anything. When you live down in here, right above your, above your belly area, that's where I experience it. Yield to Jesus and you'll just feel yourself expanding in the spirit. Jesus is expanding and he'll just overtake you. And again, I'll just, I'll lay down sometimes to be able to yield. I interact with Christ within me. And this is just tools that I use to be able to yield to the spirit of God. And I, I noticed that sometimes when I'll have this lemon face, I'm trying too hard. And I just got to, I, at one time I was trying to, I was like, I'm tired of everybody else having encounters with God. I've got to have an encounter. What about me? So I laid on the floor and I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready. Okay. Where's this encounter? I'm waiting. And I'm like, wait a minute. I look like I'm sucking on 10 lemons. <laughs> for relax. And I just lay there and I relaxed my muscles in my face and I just, 
just let the Lord just take me wherever he wants to. And I had this incredible encounter with children in heaven that never lived the, their full life on earth. And they said, I'm called to be a doctor. I'm called to be a lawyer. I was called to reach all these souls. Please go and reach my friends. And they're just out of a hunger and desperation. Go and reach my friends. And the Lord birthed the whole children's ministry out of that one encounter that I had of just laying on the floor, yielding to the spirit of God. And I mean, encounter after encounter that I've had, this is just one example. And I saw incredible things happen with children from that one encounter. And so I just want, yeah, I just want to encourage you with that. So go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, when you said that, I, my, my heart, my heart just broke. My heart, mm-hmm. my heart just broke because the, the thing that, you know, these, these children who are so full of love and they're with Jesus and they're very much alive. Yes. But they, but they, they want people to live out their destiny. That is what, that is the thing. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. And if we really think about it, he's a weed planter. Mm. He comes in and he plants weeds. He's very slick. You know, I mean, there's that scripture, I think it's in Mark, where it talks about that the seeds are dropped and that different, um, that the birds come and they eat the seeds and then sometimes it says that the um, it says that it goes down, but it doesn't go down deep. And so therefore the sun comes and it burns up the seeds. And then sometimes it says that the weeds get the seeds. See, there are a lot of different things that can happen. And what you were saying was was just to to surrender, to submit is really just taking those seeds that God has planted and pushing them down Deep yes. inside, deep inside. Because one of the things um, that the Lord recently just kind of showed me is about like with seeds. And it's funny because I don't know. I am like not a, a gardener. I am just not a gardener. And me not, either. Not I, really. And yeah, I, yeah, I know all about gardening because of the Holy Spirit. So, but what he showed me is about the seeds is that when God puts a seed, a seed of promise into you, that the first thing that happens is that seed has to die to break open for the roots to go down. Mm -hmm. And the deeper they go down, that means the bigger the promise is. So sometimes we don't see things at first, but what, what happens is in that discouragement is that, or that we start to think, Oh, well, maybe I didn't hear right. Or maybe God doesn't love me, or maybe I'm not going to do this. Or, or then something else comes along and guess what happens? There's, there's been some seeds of weeds that have been planted too, because there, there's the other scripture. It says that the, the weeds and the weed or, or the, um, the weed and the, um, uh, what is it? Um, but it's like a weed, but it's, um, is it the shaft, the shaft and the weed? Is that right? The tears? The tears. Thank you. (laughs) But to me, it's like a way it's, it's, you know, and you can't, you can't pull out the wheat without, because if you pull out the tears, you're going to kill the wheat. And so they say that they have to grow up together Mm -hmm. so that sometimes, you know, there are times that, that God can just supernaturally pull stuff out of us too. That, Mm -hmm. that, thank you, tears. (laughs) And then, and there are some times that we, we just don't understand why something isn't coming to pass. And it could be like what you're saying, Margot, is that we've gotten some weeds in there that are, are pulling from underneath because weeds work underneath the soil. They don't work on top of the soil. They go deep. And yep. so that's why it, because it's in the roots, that's where the weeds are doing the most damage. They're pulling and they're trying to twist and they're trying to turn. And if you really start to look at what a weed does, it makes such sense to what you're saying because it's, yes. it's trying to twist the truth. It's trying to twist the, 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 um, the promises. It's trying to cut off that supply yes. of, of, of the blood so that you, so then you become almost helpless. But what you're saying is just to, just to rest, just to rest in him and just to let that stuff go down deep so that you can kind of pull that up. Yes. If you want to go as fast as you want in God, then you've got to yield and rest. Mm -hmm. That's so good. The inside, outside, upside down kingdom, you know, it's like, yeah, 
it's you can't figure it out with logic. Everything is seems so backwards in the kingdom. That's why we have got to yield to know the mind of Christ. And I just wanted to go over also with dealing with roots. It's so key. It's just drawn me and my husband so much closer because whenever there would be any kind of tension, instead of seeing each other as the enemy, ideally, at least we look at the root and we pray through the root together. And so let's say if I have a very strong reaction, my husband would say, okay, there's a root there. And he wouldn't see me as the enemy, but, and all of a sudden he's like, let's pray through root together and we focus on the root the, and the devil being the enemy instead of my husband or me being the enemy. Instead of, all, if he says something mean back, it's just going to create an argument. And so we've learned to pray through roots together. And I mean, this has drawn us and bonded us like nothing else. It's incredible. And so all of a sudden he gets a word of knowledge. He's flowing in the anointing for me on my behalf. He'll say, and he tells me the root. I don't even tell him what the root is. He's like, he's like amazing. I'm so blessed with my husband. So he'll say, oh, when you were five, this happened and you've been holding on to this thing. And so in that marriage, I'm like, you're right. This happens all the time. It's so fun. And so I release forgiveness. And I just want to encourage all the married couples where you feel like it feels hopeless. And I don't see any end to this tunnel. It's just like, the, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like my marriage is falling apart. Just try this. Whenever you feel any kind of anger, you want to fight with your spouse. Instead, say, wait, there's a root. Let's pray through this root and just see your husband will just start to melt. And don't, and you know what, if your husband, a lot of people say, oh, my husband would never be open to this. I'm thinking of one example right now. And then the next week they were praying through roots together. Don't give up. Don't give into any hopelessness and you don't need your spouse, but this is incredible to be able to pray through it together. And all of a sudden my husband will have compassion instead of feeling on edge because I said the wrong thing. And so it's, it's been amazing. And then all of a sudden he'll just flow. Like I was saying, he'll flow in the anointing on my behalf and get words of knowledge. And then we're just in the glory together instead of what could have been tension between us. That's so good. That is so good. And you know, the thing that I, and I've seen it like a couple of times, like in my head, I keep seeing the scene in the shack mm -hmm. because in the shack, you know, the, the Holy Spirit brings Mackenzie to this garden and the garden is such a hot mess and and he looks and he says oh my goodness gracious and he goes this is such a mess and she goes isn't it beautiful it's a beautiful mess because our hearts are just a beautiful mess to the father that he just wants to come in the holy spirit just wants to come in and so what she starts to do is she starts pulling out the weeds in mackenzie's garden she starts to dig up the stuff that doesn't need to be there anymore. Because sometimes when we um, when we really take care of a garden, sometimes there are times that you have to turn the soil over. Sometimes we have to, there are certain things that you have to do to keep producing the fruit, keep producing all the stuff that's gonna come and flow from the garden. And I think that's what the father does. Like he doesn't just like throw us on a table and say, all right, we're gonna operate, we're gonna take, everything bad out of you. We're going to take every wound and hurt and because it would destroy us. It would just be too much for us. But like what you're saying, Marco, to as, as the emotion comes up, as there's a manifestation of a hurt, that's where God's like, aha. Okay. Deal with just that. Let's just deal with yeah. just that one. And I, I think that that is so beautiful. And I love the way that you said that you and your husband have learned to to actually focus in on the actual enemy yeah not not on each other because yes. we're so quick to say well you know this does you know this is this your this is your fault and that is your fault and it's because of this and no it it's because there's been a hurt there's been a wound that never kind of got addressed and remember that it's christ who does all the work that's right so you can't in your own strength you can't forgive anybody but there's many times when I'm trying to pray for a root and I'll feel this is too painful. I feel like I cannot forgive, even though I know in my head it's Christ who does all the forgiving. I still feel stuck. And so when I feel that, I say, Lord, 
I'm powerless to forgive. Give me the grace to forgive. And all of a sudden, I'll just feel that pain just vanishing. And I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid to face that pain because you're facing it with Jesus. You're in Jesus. And so it might be so painful. There's times that I'm like, I feel like so stuck. And I'll just say, I'm powerless to forgive. Give me the grace to forgive. And I'll just feel the grace of God just shoot out of me like a river, a powerful, mighty rushing river. And just break down that wall of unforgiveness and bitterness that I've held on to for so many years. So it's just incredible. Just in an instant, it's so quick. You don't have to pray through all these papers and papers of prayers and all this stuff it's all about interacting with the holy spirit with christ within you the hope of glory and you can uh, you could just face it right there so quickly where before i used to feel like wait i gotta wait for god to sovereignly just heal my heart or i gotta go to a conference pay all this money again conferences are great and i would probably go to inner healing conference i love stuff like that but you could also do it on your own too and mm. so quickly. It's incredible. And one other tool that I use a lot, I do this so much, is identificational repentance. And so I stand in for, let's say somebody's mother was very abusive and neglected their child so bad. I'll stand in for the mom and I'll say, I'm sorry for abusing you. I'm sorry for betraying your trust out of my pain, I hurt you so bad. Can you please forgive me? And I'll just feel all of a sudden it loosening people's hearts and they say, yes, I forgive you. But there's something about standing in for a mother, for a father. I've st stood in for fathers and stepfathers. Through Jesus, you can stand in for anybody. You have the almighty God inside of you. And so I'll say, I'm sorry for marrying your abusive stepdad. I'm so sorry that I didn't hold you as a little child. And I mean, I'm telling you, it's incredible what God does when you stand in doing identification repentance. It's amazing. And I, I've done it with just a whole group of people in a room and everybody, so many people are just crying because they never heard I'm sorry from their parents. Mm -hmm. And finally, somebody's standing in and Jesus just takes over. Come on. It's incredible. That is so good. Um, the, first, the first time I ever not stood in for a person, I, well, okay. So there, I went to Voice of the Prophet we'll talk about conferences. So I went to Voice of the Prophet and I just wanted to get a cup of coffee. That's all I wanted. I just wanted a cup of coffee. And there happened to be this woman who I thought was being prayed over, this guy that we prayed over who was part of the Global Awakening prayer team. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was, it was, she goes, oh, that was my girlfriend, whatever. She did not get prayed for and she really wanted to get prayed for. So I, I started to talk to her and then the Holy Spirit started to give me some word of knowledge. So she's like, oh, should I go get my recorder? And I'm thinking, no, <laughs> like, no, I want my coffee. I just want coffee. So she so she listened to all the stuff that I said and I got my coffee. She went back to her seat. I got my coffee. And as I'm passing by, I'm seeing her writing everything down. And she was by herself. And I said, are you by yourself? And she said, yes. I said, well, come and join us. So she's so excited. She comes and she sits with us. And again, I still did not drink my coffee. So I start talking to her and um, we just kind of started talking. And she says that she wanted to get prayed for because she had some stuff that needed to be dealt with. And um, so again, the Holy Spirit starts saying that she looks so happy, but at night she's so very sad. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's so true. She goes, but I haven't cried in 20 years. Wow. I'm like, okay, wait, what? You have not cried in 20 years? She says, I can't cry. I wow. said, so I looked at my girlfriend. I said, all right, give me some tissues. Now, I didn't know what I was doing. Honestly, Margo, I really... I, it, it really was a Holy Spirit just like took over my mouth because I didn't know what the heck I was doing because I didn't understand any of this. And so I started to pray with her and I put my hands on her and I was actually, I was interceding on her behalf and I was speaking the things out of her heart, out of her heart cry that the Lord was revealing through me 
from her. And so she was hearing her heart cry through my mouth. And one of the things was that she didn't get a chance to, um, to forgive her father. And so she forgave her father. Oh, I'm going to cry again. Um, she forgave her father, but her fa but she, but she didn't get to actually give it to him because he passed. And so she didn't know where he was. Mm -hmm. And so we, so I, I started to say, you know, and I don't know where my, where my father is. I don't know where my daddy is. And, and I was hysterically crying for this, for this, because I was feeling her pain, her stuff, and I was able to articulate and to come to the father, come to Jesus with everything that she was feeling. And so I'm like a hot mess crying and I can't even see her because I can't, I'm just like, oh, I mean, it was just, it was the craziest thing, but she cried. Wow. She got her freedom because she couldn't See, and, that, and I think what you were saying is that sometimes we have to stand in for people because even sometimes people don't even know how to articulate the pain and the emotion. And there was one time I was praying with this woman who was so badly abused by her husband that the Lord actually showed me the abuse that she endured. And so I had to forgive. I, I spoke it out for her because she couldn't but i said and i forgive you for uh like spitting on me like and she had to forgive him for everything that he did and it was he was very very violent and i had to speak these things out but i had to do that and she felt this like thing lift off so so sometimes what we can we can be for as an intercessor is we can just hold somebody's hand and we can just ask the Lord to speak the secrets of their heart, their hurts, their wounds. And yeah. so that we can be the mouthpiece. We can be their mouthpiece because sometimes we're God's mouthpiece, but sometimes we need to be a person's mouthpiece because they can't say it because it's just too painful, but it, but it's the, it's the connection that the Holy Spirit's making. Well, dealing with bitterness and unforgiveness, praying through roots like this is not just about inner healing and just feeling better so that, oh, I don't have those hurts anymore. It's so much bigger than that. It's about oh. intimacy with the Lord. You can hear God clearly where before you were hearing through loneliness and rejection. You think you're seeing through these glasses thinking everybody's rejecting you. When you get your heart healed, you're like, wait a minute, everybody's not rejecting me. And then you're able to hear God clear because you don't think he's rejecting you. The spirit of rejection will lie in all different areas of your heart. And so if you want to see clearly in the spirit, hear clearly, you've got to get your soul heal healed up. So this is much bigger than just getting that pain dealt with. No, I, and I do agree with that, but, and I think that sometimes that's the first step. Sometimes as we um, can actually do forgiveness, as we start to forgive that lift, we can start to, to hear better. We can start to see better. I, I actually saw when, with my, my own sister, when she finally encountered Jesus and she saw him face to face, I saw stuff brown like black stuff being i mean like it was like it was like a, a um like watching a movie i could literally mm. see it being pulled off because in his glory that stuff can't stay in yes. his glory it cannot stay and so it, you you start to understand the bigger picture you start when you start to experience these encounters and you start to understand what unforgiveness does what rejection does what abandonment does what these things do to a person just like you you become so passionate to get them free to teach them the tools to keep them free because also, that's okay. that go ahead. i was just gonna say that stuff wants to come back yeah. Also, when I'm ministering to some or even spending time with someone or, you know, this is good to practice all the time and just to live in the spirit is to release love. Let's say 
um, trying to tell somebody about Jesus and you could feel that there's walls up. When you release that love in the spirit, it's just you yielding and you're just releasing Jesus to that person. Those walls will melt down. So don't give up praying for somebody because they have all these walls up and you're just giving up on them. Never do that. Instead, keep pressing in. Just release love. Just yield to the love of the Father and release that love like a river to that person. And you'll see over time, maybe instantly, it might take a few minutes or however long, but just yield to the Spirit of God and you'll see those walls come down. Hardened hearts all of a sudden will soften up. And it's something that only the Father can do. And so whenever I'm out uh, evangelizing with my friends and you know, we're trying to tell people about Jesus at first, if you notice some kind of wall, just keep releasing that love. And you'll notice all of a sudden something's going to begin to happen in the spirit realm and that person's going to change. Absolutely. And, and I think that's, that's the cool part is as you, when you see somebody's free, whom the sun sets free is free. Indeed. You will start to see them looking different, talking different. I've seen people walk different. I've actually seen somebody who used to walk with their head down, who now walks with their head held up. I I saw a woman who after she got free, she actually started putting makeup on. She started to really take care of herself. I mean, I've seen it, it's such a night and day difference when you start to under when you get your freedom, when yes. you actually get your freedom, you get your identity. Yes. And I can't even talk about how important yielding really is. If you want to stay in the spirit, if you want to live the fullness of what Jesus has for you, then you have got to learn how to just yield, not try to do cartwheels in the flesh, trying to impress God. He's, in, he's, you, you don't have to do anything else to impress him. He's impressed because he made you. You're mm -hmm. fearfully and wonderfully made. He's already as impressed with you as he could ever be. He's in awe of you. He's madly in love with you. He thinks about you more than the grains of sand. I mean, how many trillions upon trillions? Upon, I don't even know. There's so much sand. And yet he thinks about you even more than that. He never stops thinking about you. And so... There's, don't try to keep impressing God and just yield to him. He accepts you just as you are. You're fully known and eternally accepted as a Christian because the father sees the blood of Jesus. He's not looking at how much you failed in the past. He's not looking at how weak you've been and all this stuff. He says, the Bible says, boast in your weakness because then God's strength could be made perfect. And so when the father looks at you, he doesn't see you as a broken mess shattered into a million pieces, but he sees you as pure, as holy. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because he who knew no sin became sin. The pure spotless lamb of God became loneliness. He became anger. He became abuse and rage and all the junk that you've ever endured in your life. He became that so that you can be holy and pure and acceptable unto the Lord. And so he, God calls you worthy to carry God inside of you. He has deposited, deposited himself inside of you. You are already worthy in Jesus. And if you say, I don't know if I have Jesus living inside of me right now, just receive Jesus. Just tell Jesus that you're sorry. Let him just wash you clean in your own words. Just talk to Jesus. He's been waiting for you all these years. Now is your time to encounter God. That's Amen. so good. I feel such a strong anointing. I know you are, you are preaching Thank baby you are. that you are just preaching. And that is the father's heart. You know, he wants us to be reconciled back into him because yeah. there are so many people who don't, you know, when you start to talk about, well, I, I had an encounter, I had an encounter with the Lord. You know, the first thing that people think is, okay, she's crazy. The second thing that they think is, Oh my goodness. She is special. She is special because she was able to have an encounter. And that is not the truth. The truth is, is that we, we, um, it's for we, everyone. It's for everyone. And it, and it, it's really about how we pursue 
how we pursue our, our relationship with the Lord. It's like, you know, it says, I think you said this earlier, we get not because we ask not. We're not asking, you know, and it says to go boldly to the throne room. We're supposed yeah. to go. It, it didn't say that we're not supposed to go. This is supposed to go boldly. And let me tell you something. When we go boldly, that's when we start to, things start to shift. You know, that's when we can start to see things open up and we can see those prayers that we've just been like, oh, Lord, please. You know, we start to see those things shift and move because now we're sitting there and we're grabbing the father's robe and going, I need you to hear me. I need you to listen. And it's almost like, um, cause you have three boys, right? Yep. And so what happens is when you're busy and you're trying to do your stuff, when your boys want to get your attention, they come over to you and they start yanking on you. When they start yanking on you, it, you just completely stop whatever you're doing to give your attention to that child. And that's why I believe it says to go boldly. I think that it should say we should go boldly and yank on this robe. That's my personal. That because that's that's what I do. Because yeah. when we start to do that, you know, I don't. Uh, and and I and I just kind of feel like when we can do that, we have a trust with the father. Like we don't think yeah. he's going to dismiss us. You know, when your kids yank on you, they're not thinking that you're going to beat them. They yeah. know that 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 it's important whatever they need is so important that they have to get your attention. It's the same thing with the father. And so he's able to turn himself to say, look at this. This is something that's important, you know, and everything. And he hears everything. He knows everything, but it's, yeah. but it's when we start to position ourselves because you heard your kids, it's, you know, yes. it's just, I, I, I just got something to do. I'll deal with you in a minute. But when they start yanking on you, now you have a choice. Do I still ignore them or do I do I give my direct attention? And most moms will give their attention to their kid and they'll say, OK, what is it? Yes, yep. we'll take care of this right now, because this has now become a imperative situation to that so child. I, really, I love Galatians 2.20, where it says Christ lives in me. Mm. And when I just meditate on that, I'm like, this is incredible. And so I meditate on Christ within and I'll feel him. You know, everybody experiences God differently, but I feel him like fire. I feel him burning in my chest and it gets stronger and stronger as I yield more and more. And I'm like, my face is hot. I'm red. You know, everyone's different, but this is me. And, and I'll feel all this electricity going on inside of me and I'll just keep yielding. And there's something about interacting with Christ within not even because, you know, the Israelites in the Old Testament, they saw the, the pillar of fire and the cloud, the pillar of cloud from afar. Right. OK, they had that under the old covenant. But what's different in the New Testament now under the new covenant? Now we have Christ within us, the almighty God, the creator, the one who spoke and galaxies were created, lives inside of us. And he wants out. He wants to be released like a rushing river. He doesn't want to just stay stagnant inside of us. He wants, to, he's on the go. You know, he wants to be his love just to shine from us. Let your light shine. And so what I do, what I, you know, and people ran with soaking for a long time. And I guess you could call it soaking, whatever you want to call it. But I just, I, there's something about laying down that helps me yield. And I focus on Christ within something I do all the time is look for Jesus. This is a mm. big key for me. And a lot of times I'll see him on the outside. Like, like you look for Jesus in a painful memory when you're getting healed, you look for Jesus. It brings breakthrough. I look for Jesus all day. I am addicted to looking for Jesus. Talking about it makes me so gushy right now is this is what I live for. I mean, what else am I going to live for? Everything else fails me. Everything else Come just on. is so disappointing. There is nothing else worth living for, but Jesus looking for the father and it, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. So you can always find him. He's always there. He's inside of you as a Christian. You have him in you. He's all around you. He consumes you. And sometimes you tap into and you feel it. But by faith, accept that. Know that he is everywhere at all times. So he is right there in your face, looking at you, obsessed with you. There is no one who could love you even close to that, except that they have Jesus in them. They could tap into it a little bit. But his love for you is bottomless it's endless and it's eternal 
Mom. And his obsession for you, there's never less or more. He's all out obsessed with you. He is Absolutely. in love with you, even though you messed up earlier today, even though you yelled at your kids earlier, whatever it is that you did, God wants to heal you right now. He wants to wash you clean. You are the righteousness of God. And he is madly, madly in love with you. And so I just, what I do is I yield, I interact with Christ within. And a lot of times interacting with God is me saying absolutely nothing. I mean, a lot of times I feel like I have nothing to say. When I feel that fire burning, the electricity going all around, it's like, what, what do I have to say? I'm just like, my mouth is probably usually wide open. Like what is going on? This is incredible. This is my life. I don't have to wait till I breathe my last breath to experience heaven. God says to groan, yearn, to be clothed with heaven, to be swallowed up by life, that this mortal body would be swallowed up with, with the life of heaven, with Jesus, the glory of the Lord. I don't have to wait till after I die to experience it. Now is a time we're supposed to groan. Second Corinthians five, we need to groan and yearn for heaven now. And so I yield and interact just by being still a lot of, a lot of the time I have nothing to say. Sometimes I do. So usually I don't. And I'm just like in awe laying there and I'll feel God just filling me up. And just yield it. And I'll give you one example of what I do. But last night, this is one example that's coming to my mind right now to share. Is I saw a staircase as I was just laying there yielding. I'm electrifying like crazy, burning. And I, I see this staircase. And instead of just seeing a staircase, I said, God, I'm going to, I want to, I just felt like God was inviting me to go up the stairs. You know, just being in tune with the spirit is key. Yielding is being in tune with the spirit and flowing with him, not shutting it off. If again, if you feel like that doorway feels tense, let it go. Just yield, repent, yield, just yield. And I'm telling you, there's something about uh, even loosening muscles and just laying there. So all of a sudden I said, I'm, I want to go up these stairs. I felt the invitation of the Lord. So a lot of times the Lord will show you a picture. Don't just stop there. A lot of times people are like, oh, I saw a vision. I saw a vision. Okay, but let's go further. What else does God have? Don't just stop with that vision. And so God wants us to experience that vision. And so I start going up the stairs in the spirit. The Lord invited me. I'm just flowing with Jesus. And I'm going up and I feel myself going up higher and higher. And this the glory's building, the electricity, that's just what I call it. That's how I describe it, like electricity overtaking me, burning more and more. I'm going up, going up the stairs until I felt like I reached something. And I just, I'm taken into this incredible encounter where I see my feet and Jesus' feet and we're dancing together. I see his hair and I didn't even tell anybody this encounter. It was even hard to talk about because when it's so like incredible and intimate. It's like, I was almost like, should I even share this to all these people? But I just feel like the Lord's like, yes, I want you to share it now. And so I'm just trying to be sensitive to the Lord. But I, I felt like the Lord's like protectiveness over me. There's so much more than just seeing just a little glimpse of stairs, press in for more of that encounter. A lot of times when God shows us something, he wants to take us deeper and deeper. So I started feeling like I was actually dancing with Jesus. It was so real to me and it felt so intimate. I felt him so close and I felt like he just was like wanting to protect me and just his love, just shielding me. It was incredible. What an incredible encounter I had last night. And over and over, one and one more encounter that's popping up where I tasted something. Come and on. God wants to activate all five of our senses in the spirit, not just mm -hmm. seeing. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm just a seer. No, God wants you to experience the fullness. Mm. He has so much for you. And so for a long time, I'm like, what am I, a seer? Or do I hear more? No, I'm like, no, I don't want to limit myself. I want the fullness of what God has. And so, and yeah, there's some things that come more naturally maybe, and that that's real too. But anyway, so one time I was at a conference, somebody was praying for me and I saw a ladder above my head. And so I pressed into the encounter and all of a sudden I started to actually feel like I was tasting the wood. And every time I would oh, talk wow. about the encounter, I would start tasting that wood again. 
but it didn't feel bad. It wasn't a bad feeling in heaven. Nothing feels bad ever. So don't be mm. afraid of tasting wood or anything, but it was such an incredible, and I went up the ladder and I saw more and it, it took me into this whole other encounter. So, and, and, you know, I said, press into the encounter and that reminded me, this is a massive, massive, massive key for me. And I wanted to make sure to share this is press into your pain. Mm. A lot of times people change the subject. You feel pain. Oh, I got to worship Jesus. And the demon goes and hides and you keep that demon and you keep that pain. And the Lord has spoken to me so many times, press into the pain. That's why when I feel a bad feeling, I don't just say, oh, I need to just worship. I'm going to just dance until I feel joy again. No, press into the pain with Jesus. Now that you have the tools. And I said, I'd go over it real quick. And I just want to say it real fast. You ask the Holy Spirit for the memory. Release forgiveness like a river. Receive forgiveness like a river. Renounce agreements with darkness, whatever you agreed with. And then I encounter God in that memory or just encounter God at all. And then I listen for truth and I replace the lies with truth. So just those five steps right there have changed my life forever. It's been incredible. So I want to make sure press into the pain is a huge. Mm, that's good. That's really good. And I, I'm cracking up because you're talking about dancing with Jesus because mm. I was at Heaven's Invasion, which is a, um, a service that from Russ Painter, who's really good friends with, with your dad. And I was at Heaven's Invasion during worship when I danced with Jesus. Wow. And yeah, and it was, and, and he started to talk to me about, and he said to me, he, he started to explain about dancing and he said, he said, dance with me, Lisa. And we started to, but before we started to dance, I, we were about to start dancing and I was looking like right here, like in his mm -hmm. chest area. And I could see, I could see the hairs. Like I could see, I could see, I could see Jesus's hairs. I'm like, oh, that's really this, funny. Right. I was like, oh. And, um, and then what happened is Jesus took his finger and because I couldn't look at him and he lifted up my chin like this so that I could see his face and I saw his face and I saw his eyes. And I remember saying to myself, remember his eye color, remember, cause everybody talks about his eye color and I'm like, and I'm looking in his eyes and, and I'm like, they're blue and they're green. No, they're blue. No, they're green. No, they're blue. Wait, no, they're, oh their love. The mm. color of Jesus's eyes are love. Mm. It's not a color that we can understand, but the color is love. And so we started to dance and, and, and Jesus said, he said, when you have a very strong dance partner, you could be twirled around the dance floor effortlessly. Each mm. spin, every turn is, is beautiful to watch. He says, but if you have two people who want to lead, it becomes a problem and it becomes disjointed oh, yes. and, it, and it becomes, a, and, and eventually the dance has to stop. He says, but if you let me, Lisa, I will dance with you all over the country, all over the world. Mm. Let me lead you. Well, that's like when I go out evangelizing with my friends, I don't wanna see it as, okay, this is time set aside where I'm just going to work hard and just every person I see, I'm just going to share Jesus. Oh, you got to hear the gospel. Oh, it's the best news. ever. But instead I see it when I go out, this is a dance with the lover of yes! my soul. Come and I'm on. Here to be on fire. I'm out here to be intimate. If Jesus says to be quiet, then just stand there and just be with it. Whatever he said, flowing with him. But a lot of people dread. It's like pulling teeth. A lot of times saying, let's go evangelize. And it's like, it's hard to get anybody to go because it feels like such hard work where God's saying, I just want you to be intimate on fire for me in the streets, in mm. front of the lost. Just burn. Let your light shine. And if he says to open your mouth and go with it, if you know, and just try to learn how, and don't be afraid. Oh, what if I miss it? Just try, just step out and learn to flow. And I'm telling you to burn, to be on fire for God when Mom. you're willing to pour out, when you're willing to open your mouth 
we'll call it ministry, but it's really shining before people. It's okay. burning, be on, being on fire, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's through preaching. Maybe it's through giving a prophetic word to somebody on the street, your neighbor, however it looks. But it's about burning for Jesus. Everything Mom. should be intimate, uh, intimate love song, a dance with the Father, a dance with Jesus. And I noticed that fire burns so much stronger in my personal life when I don't shut that off. When I don't put walls up and say, I, I'm going to keep this fire to myself, I notice there's not as much fire in my life. If you want to burn for the Lord, like as much as possible, you want to feel him inside of you like fireworks. I'm telling you, be willing to pour out. Stop mm -hmm. letting fear hold you back and waiting. I, I wrote a, a writing, a post about this, and I made a video. Stop waiting for that special day when you're going to have it all together and you're going to be bold enough because so many people die and that special day never came and they never fulfilled that their calling. Don't let that be you. If you want your life to be filled with the fire, the glory, the fullness of what Jesus has for you, then be willing to let your light shine before men. Don't keep that light to yourself. Go to the street, whatever it is that God's calling you to do. If you're a songwriter, write those songs. If you're mm -hmm. called to paint for the Lord and to give your paintings mm -hmm. away, sell your painting, then go for it. Do what God is asking you to do. But let your light shine before men and don't keep it to yourself. Stop waiting for that special day when you're going to have it all together. Remember, boast in your weakness. You feel like, forget it. I don't have what it takes. Like You feel like most. Moses, I'm a stutterer. I'm tongue tied. God, don't use me. Don't be like Moses because he traded in a big part of his calling because he felt inadequate. Don't give up what God's called you to do like he did. He gave it to his brother Aaron because he thought Aaron was good at speaking and he gave up his calling. God would have got so much more glory if he took a stutterer, a man who felt so inadequate in his own self, someone who's tongue tied. If he spoke through him, he would have got way more glory through Moses than somebody who felt good and adequate in themselves like Aaron. And so let your light shine shine before men. Stop letting that fire just stay hidden inside of you. Don't be that stagnant swamp. Let Jesus rush out of you like a rushing river and you will know so much more fire and intimacy with the Lord. I'm telling you, since God birthed in pursuit of the fire, this Facebook page that he told me to start, I guess it was back in February. I've noticed so much more fire in my own life because I'm just pouring out so much more to the world and God's like, okay, now I have more room to just flood you and flood you more because you're releasing me. And when we're faithful with the little God gives us, he'll entrust you with more and more and more. And so when you're faithful to speak out what you're hearing, God says, okay, you're someone I can trust. I'm going to speak even more clearer to you. I'm going to give you prophetic words for people. Okay. You're faithful with this vision. I'm going to give you more visions. And so be faithful with what God's given you and he will entrust you with more and you will know so much more fire in your life. If you feel like you're not on fire for God, you feel like a stagnant swamp inside of you. I just want to ask you, are you willing to pour out? Are you willing to let your light shine before men? And if you haven't, don't feel so guilty and beat up about it. Just repent right now. Don't live a life feeling all regretful and full of guilt. That's not what God has for you. He says there is no condemnation in him. And so see yourself as the righteousness of God. Just repent to the Lord and decide from right now on that you're going to stop waiting for that special day that you're going to have it all together and just say, now is the time. This is that special day because the, the one who spoke and galaxies were created, who spoke and there was light and, and darkness, that same God lives inside of you and just let him flow. Just yield to him. That was that was some serious preaching. That was some serious preaching, girlfriend. Seriously. Well, I pray that so many people will begin to feel a fire as oh, they're feeling. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are just saying, well, I'm just going to let my light shine just by living like a Christian. 
But a lot of times I'll notice this incredible anointing and fire release mm -hmm. when I just open my mouth and I'm willing to say anything that Jesus says. I mean, it might seem like such a simple prophetic word, but when I speak it out, all of a sudden I'll feel fire release anointing. It feels different all the time, but you know, I'll just feel something happen. There's a shift or a, a person will begin to cry and they'll feel God just hitting them with his mm -hmm. love and it's because you open your mouth and also i want to encourage you don't let your light shine by just saying well i'm just living like a christian and mm -hmm. never saying anything a lot of times god is waiting for us to open our mouth do that prophetic act maybe to dance maybe god's saying to dance and you've been shutting that off and god's saying go out and dance something is released when you do the act that god is asking you to do and so just be willing and if you feel like god i i feel like i can't do that i'm too afraid just remember drink in jesus in the spirit drop down out when i reason it just takes me into bad land <laughs> i don't know what else to call it it's a bad place when i just let my mind take over i got to drop down to my spirit and I just yield and I interact with Jesus, the lover of my soul, the one who's mm -hmm. more passionate about me than anybody ever could be, lives inside of me. And when I just talk to, I just interact with Christ within me, I just flow. And, you know, I used to drink in the spirit, you know, by just like, like prophetic acts, you know, like trying to learn what does that mean to drink in the spirit? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I just, I'll just down in here above my belly, and my core, I'll just drink down in there and I just mm. drink in the spirit and release Jesus. I drink from Christ within me and it's incredible. It'll help you to overcome anything. Yeah. Whatever you've been afraid to do, you've been holding back all these years because you've been so afraid. Just drink in the spirit and get out of your natural mind and live a spirit filled life where you're truly in the spirit. I mean, it's incredible. And when you're focused on Jesus, when you look for Jesus and you find him in your core or whatever he's doing, you feel like you can do anything. You can overcome anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that is, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us, you know, when you were talking about that, you know, we're groaning, but you know, it says that, that create that, that the earth is groaning for the yes. sons and the daughters to rise up. Because we are supposed to be ruling and reigning. When, when Jesus went to the cross, we were given back the authority. We were given back everything. Adam and Eve were given, they were told to rule and reign. That's what Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden. But when Jesus went to the cross, we got it back. We got it back yes. and we're still not doing it. And, and like you're saying, Margot, when we open our mouth, it says that there's blessings and there's curses. We choose, we choose as believers, as Christ within us, Christ blesses. And so we speak out blessings. We change the atmosphere by the things that we say. We start to release the peace inside of us. If we have the Prince of Peace inside of us, we start to release that peace every place that we go. It says that we, we actually wear the full armor of God. We have the sandals of peace. Each step that we take, each place that we place our feet, we are releasing peace as sons and as daughters of the Most High God. We just start to walk and claim that territory. We start to release the things inside of us. We don't have to like pray for heaven to come down. We have to pull heaven out because we live in heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. We are seated with Jesus, that we have his mind it says that we have a christ-like mind so the things that we say we don't have to worry about because it's coming from the father it's coming from jesus it's coming from a place of heaven it's coming from a greater understanding we might not understand these things it says that some of the things that we understand we it might sound like foolishness to men but to god god sees the bigger picture and sometimes we don't understand you know we think that we're supposed to minister to a person in a certain way but god's like you can't minister in that way because if you minister in that way it's going to scare that person so do it my way to, let, let's dance let's dance this yeah. thing out let's show let's show them that you know what i'm not religion yes. i i am a personal daddy 
I am a personal father who cares about you, who loves you, who knows the number of hairs on your head, who captures your tears because your tears are important. Nothing is wasted. I hear you when you speak. I see you. I am the God who sees. We have to come back to an understanding of God's names. When God says, this is who I am, we have to come into a place where we understand as sons, as daughters, that this is his name. He, he, it says that he will protect his name. So in everything that he is, he says that he is provider, but yet what we become double-minded in the things that we think that, well, God's not going to provide. No, no. It says in the word that he is our provider that he, and it says, and it says, that, you know, do not worry about what you eat or drink or what you wear for the Lord God knows your needs. See, we, we have to understand as sons and as daughters that we are not servants. There's a big difference in being a servant and being a son and a daughter because you don't you don't treat your servants the way you treat your sons and daughters. They're treated very differently. You might yeah. care about them, but you don't have that intimacy with your servants, but you do have that intimacy with your sons and daughters. That's why it's a very, very different understanding. The Lord started to talk to me. He said that a servant serves out of fear. But a son and a daughter serve out of love. Mm. I will do all that God tells me to do because of my love for him, because of my love for Jesus, because I know that they are for me and not against me. You know, when I when I see encounters and I'm I'm honored and, and humbled mm -hmm. to see people get touched by Jesus, get touched by the Father, get touched by the Holy Spirit, and I can see them radically change. I can see their eyes open. I can see them going, wait a second. This is not, I've never experienced anything like that. I'm like, you're seeing the Father. You're seeing the love that he has for you. Yes. Jesus says that I only do what I see my Father in heaven do. That's where the dance comes in. Yes. Right? And That's I what I also want to encourage everybody, if you feel like you don't have all the right motives, that's okay. Just if you feel afraid, still don't hold back waiting for Absolutely. the right motive. Do it afraid. And I'm just thinking about my dad, my, <laughs> my natural father, Gary Fishman. He, he sounds he, so much like him. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I that. It's so funny. But um, when I was 10 years old, he's like, Margo's going to come up and give a prophetic word. And I'm like, I am? before the whole church, what I, I am, I, ha I didn't even know what prophetic, and all of a sudden I would just get up there and I would feel afraid. I used to be pretty shy as a kid, actually. It was hard for me to say hello to people. Anyway, God's brought me a long way, but I, I was, you know, feeling afraid, but I would just go up because my dad put me on the spot. He said, I'm coming up and God would give me a prophetic word on the spot over and over time and time again. And I'm thankful my dad pushed me out at a young age. And so God is saying, okay, I'm with you. I'm your father. And a lot of things that I've done in my life for the Lord, and I've seen great fruit and experienced the Lord mightily through it. There's, sorry, there's a little fun. It was, I felt afraid, you know, and I did it anyway. And the Lord blessed it and he moved mightily. And so I want to encourage you just like uh, in the, pro the prodigal son, he came home probably because he was uncomfortable with, eating pig's food and he had, he was starving and living out with nothing. And he probably came home for the wrong motives. But the father was like, I see my son taking any steps for me. I'm going to go running after him. God's not all like, oh, you have wrong motives that I'm not going to use you. God is so gracious and so merciful. And he's the only one that could give you the right motives. So don't wait for the right motives to be all in place. Just go and be obedient. Do what God is asking you to do. Do it afraid, no matter how you feel. Go after it because there is a lost and dying world. There are people right now that are going to hell and Christ in you is the hope of glory for this planet right now. Every person that's breathing still who doesn't know Jesus can know Jesus because of your life, because of your obedience to the Lord. And it doesn't mean to go strive and run around and go tell everybody. Just yield to the Lord. If you want to be as effective as possible, it doesn't mean staying as busy as possible. It means being busy yielding. 
Just yield to the Lord. Be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All God wants is your yes. And maybe you're going to win a lot of souls through intercession, through the groans of the spirit. Just whatever it is the Lord is showing you to do, just be obedient to him. If he gives you a prophetic picture, a lot of times people don't get prophetic pictures for other people in Walmart and grocery stores because they're not willing. But once you're willing, once you say, yes, God, I'm open, all of a sudden you'll notice God giving you all these downloads. He's waiting to give you prophetic words visions for people and they're lost they're hurting people are suicidal depressed right now and they need your life to be yielded to the father absolutely i agree with that 100 percent because it is getting dark it is yes. getting very very dark out there and we have to become brighter see yes. that but it, okay so we can look at the darkness and go oh my gosh it's getting so dark and people are blah 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 but but let's look at it in a different perspective if it's if it's not dark enough you don't see light you don't see a flashlight you really don't it's it becomes mm -hmm. muted but the darker it becomes the brighter we become yes. we become we actually will bring people like a moth to a flame and transform them into butterflies because yes. when they when they meet the father they're going to go through a metamorphosis that's going to change them and they're going to be instead of being these like nasty moths they're going to be these beautiful monarch butterflies full of color full of the the colors of, of heaven right mm -hmm. that yes. they are going to shine they're going to be beautiful they're not going to be ill moth <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and i think that's that's what we have to start to say. It's like, oh my gosh, these are opportunities. We have opportunities each and every day to be the light. Every single day. When we, like you said, going into Walmart, going into work, you know, there's um there's something that we can do each and every day to show God's love. Every single day to show Jesus inside of us. All we have to do, as you were saying, is just to yield to what the Father says, right? And that's why the enemy is trying to fight with all that fear because he knows there's a blessing on the other side. That's right. Even if the person says, no, I, I'm not interested in the Lord or whatever, you never know, first that's of all, right. what that person might be thinking over and over just that you said Jesus loves you or that you're looking at them and they saw Jesus in your eyes. You never know. That's all right. you have to do is be accountable to Lord and be faithful with what God is asking you to do. Don't even worry about any outcome. It's about you being saying yes to God and being a yielded vessel to the Lord that's and it. leave all the outcomes to God. That That's not a show of how successful you are by how much people respond to you. It's about your faithfulness to the Lord and being obedient. Come on. That's the word right there. Obedience. Because yes. if we're not obedient, he can't use you. Yes. And it's not that he doesn't want to use you. But obedience means, just like Jesus, not my will, but yours. Well, you could be effective somewhat by, you know, trying and you're, you're trying your best to go out there and, and preach the gospel, whatever it is you're trying to do. But you'll be way, way, way more effective Absolutely. if you rest in God and yield and just be obedient. It's like you could talk and talk and have all the, the right sounding words. But if you just say the words of Jesus, what he's saying to speak yeah. out, that's how you're truly going to be effective in this world way more. Even though you could have some, you know, if you could be somewhat effective doing other things, but that's sacrificing, but obedience is way better than just sacrifice. Absolutely. And I think sometimes what, what we have to understand, it, it's not about, it, well, we're not here to judge because there are people who have great intentions, but it's their intentions. Mm -hmm. It's, and see, so what happens is that the father knows all, he sees all, he sees the bigger picture. He knows what to say. He knows the right timing. Sometimes if we're not yielding to the Holy Spirit, we're missing the timing because sometimes God wants to do something, but it's just not the right time and it's yeah. going to be rejected. And there are so many people who have, have had encounters with religion 
that they, but they haven't encountered the father. There's a big difference because we can use the right words and we can say, you know, think that, you know, quoting scripture, it's all good. But see, when a, when a person's not in that place, they're not going to be able to receive it. And well, the whole, I'll, go ahead. Well, I was I, just, oh, go ahead. We both like to, <laughs> no, uh, sorry. but um, no, one thing, if you really want to know the heart of the father, know that his chest is always available for you to just lean on into his chest and that you're seated with the father, with Christ in heavenly places. It's all available. Whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to you. You're co-heirs with Christ. And so if you feel like my, your natural father, my father was abusive and my stepfather was a terrible example of the father's heart. I feel like I've missed out and I don't know the father's love. Know that the Father is always available to you at all times. Just go and just lean on Him. Just see yourself in the Spirit, being with Him. Your co heirs with Christ. Take your rightful place. Sit on the Father's lap as a child. Let Him just flood that place that's hurting. Deal with the roots and get filled back up with the Father's love. And one time recently, I was just leaning on the Father's chest and it was the most incredible feeling of my whole life. I just felt like no matter what I did or didn't do, I'm just as accepted and loved. And I felt like I don't have to strive. I mean, I've heard it so many times, but such a deep encounter happened just being on the father's chest. And the father said, you have access to my chest anytime mm -hmm. you want, all the time. And you have God's undivided attention. And I just drink in the undivided attention of Jesus. When I, when I've struggled with rejection or loneliness or whatever, all of a sudden I'll just drink it in, just drinking in my core, drinking undivided attention from Jesus, knowing mm. that Jesus never looks away, that he's not pulled in all different directions. His eyes are always, always upon you and mm. he will never look away. The father is the same. The father is looking at you just drinking right now, just drinking his undivided attention. Forgive your father and receive forgiveness. God wants you to see clearly and just drink in the perfect love of father God. His lap is always available to you. That's so good. That's so good. And the other thing that the Lord shared with me, and because it's kind of um, what you're talking about, Margot, the Lord said to me, because there was a, a time that I was spending a lot of time with Jesus. And I felt kind of like guilty because I was spending all this time with Jesus. And I was like, wait, maybe this isn't good. Like, why am I spending so much time with Jesus? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Lisa, he says, we are all things to you. And I was like, okay. He says, sometimes you need a father, but sometimes you need a brother. Mm. Sometimes you need a mother. Yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes you need a husband. Yes. He yeah. said, we can be all those things for you. Yes. Two and a half years ago, my mom passed away from cancer. And I have felt such incredible grace where I always feared my mom dying, my parents. I mean, that was like actually a really big fear of mine growing up. And finally, the, the time came, my mom's in hospice and I wasn't a wreck. I, when she died, I didn't feel like I was falling apart. And I realized like God's grace is truly sufficient. You don't have to fear anything. When you have the Lord inside mm -hmm. of you, you could face anything. And God has filled that place where I long for a mom. Whenever I feel, I, it's not like I never grieve. Sometimes I'll feel the grief coming out. The Lord is just cleaning me out deeper and he fills me with his mother's love. He's a father to the fatherless, a mother to the motherless. Whatever we need, we could find it in the Lord. And so if you feel like just, if you're watching right now and you feel like this horrible grief because you lost the child, you lost your natural brother god wants to flood that place and he wants to free you from a spirit of grief and that's one thing somebody told me this years ago and it helped me so much she was my friend was grieving so bad when her mom passed away and she could not stop crying and then finally the lord showed her it was a spirit of grief and she 
repented and renounced the agreements with the spirit of grief and it left and she never was hysterical like that anymore and she felt whole and fulfilled in the lord in that area and so in jesus name i speak freedom from the spirit of grief over you if you feel bound by that grief and it feels like you can't take life anymore you don't want to live be free of that right now in jesus name and the lord is just filling you with his undivided attention with his unconditional love right now let him just mm. flood you in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. That is so good. And you know what? That is, there are so many things that we think are natural. We think that they're natural. Well, I'm supposed to feel grief. Yeah. You know, and it's like, or sometimes I'm supposed to be, have some sadness and, it, and it's, it was interesting because like there was one time that there was this woman who kept crying and crying and crying. And the more she was crying, the more ang I was getting angry. <laughs> and I was like, and I felt bad. I'm like, why am I getting so angry? And the Lord said, because that's a demon. I went, what? He goes, yeah. He goes, that's a demon. That is manifestation. And it's just to, to stop what you're trying to do. That's just a yes. distraction. So you tell that thing to shut up. <laughs> and then I was like, no more crying in Jesus name. And it was like, boom. It was like, but you know, sometimes we think that some of these things that we're feeling are, are okay or that they're natural. And sometimes we don't realize that it actually is something bigger. And so when we start to, um, I always feel like this, if you feel out of control, that you don't have control in something. That's when you need to go and ask the father, okay, what's going on? What is this? Because if I can't stop it, if it is something above me that I have no control in, there's a reason. That well, means- when, when there's a root, people get stuck. Let's say when a person was three years old and they were raging, uh, a lot of times you'll see adults act like a three-year-old and you're wondering why, why are they acting so irrational? It's because a part of them, the growth was stunted and the Lord could fix all that through praying through a root, releasing forgiveness, receiving forgiveness. And so a lot of times people are overreacting and, you know, it's easy to be like, what is wrong with, that? you know, but they're acting out of pain. And we have yes. to remember that instead of condemning people, looking down on people saying, what's wrong with you, rejecting them. So many times the flesh just wants to just throw people away and reject in the body of Christ. I see it so much. And in the meantime, we're called to unconditionally love people. And we've got to see through, we've got to see right through all the, the irrational things that we're seeing all the the demonic manifestations and realize there's roots deep down inside that need to be healed and let's press in for our brothers and our sisters for their healing instead of just rejecting them and just cutting them off and saying ew look at them they're too messed up i don't want to have anything to do with them i'm thankful jesus never did that to me and said oh mm -hmm. forget her she's done too many bad things i'm just gonna cut her off no way God is obsessed with me, even in all my mess and all the Mom. screw ups, everything. He's obsessed with me mm, and we have so got good. to be Christ-like and do the same. Uh, also, my husband, thank God he didn't just throw me away. Instead, when, when I start overreacting, he loves me through. He says, let's pray through a root together. I just want to encourage all of you, pr press in to pray through roots with other people. When you see them overreacting, say, I just learned this simple thing. Let, let's just pray through a release forgiveness in that memory. And it's so simple and so quick. I mean, God healed me of these really deep wounds. When I first learned about this, I was obsessed with dealing with roots and it's not about me digging. You know, people, a lot of times are afraid of navel gazing. They call and digging for roots. Instead, I'm just yielding and I'm asking the Holy spirit to bring mm, up the root. Absolutely. And it's, and it's so instant. Forgiveness is not this long process because nope. it's Jesus doing the work. It's instant. Christ, the forgiver, forgives right through you. Yes, the process is long in the sense where you have to deal with root upon root upon root, but forgiveness is instant. Yep. And so I've never seen God. I mean, you know, he's the almighty, but I've never seen him just heal a whole heart instantly. I've seen because it takes us saying, I forgive. We mm. need to do our part of forgiving. And yes. that's what's holding up our 
our freedom. That's yeah. what's keeping us in prison in cages in the spirit where Christ died to set us completely free. So enjoy the freedom that Christ died for in your life. That's so good. Let him set you completely free. Deal with those roots. Don't hold on to it. Press into the pain. Mm. And let him set you free. That's so good. And I, and I, I think that what, what God is always trying to do is he's trying to, to bring us into a place where we understand what's happening so that we can address it so that we can deal with it. And like I said, you know, sometimes we don't understand things and God has to come in and say, this is this, this is this. Now let's deal with this. We're going to start dealing with it. And God is so patient. He is so patient. He has taken me through things and has, has healed things inside of me that I didn't even realize were broken. He mm -hmm. took me into places that I like, I wouldn't be looking for them. I just wouldn't be looking for them. But God is like, see, we need to deal with this. And, and he was so faithful and so gentle. And he did it in such a way that it was complete. It was a complete surrender. It was a complete like understanding, like where this even came in. Because sometimes things can actually come in even before you were born, because there are things that we can hear when we're in our mother's womb, that we can hear if there's rejection, if there's a fear, if there's stuff, that stuff gets into the baby. And sometimes I have a, a friend who, who does inner healing, and she says that sometimes there are children who were born because of the things that were spoken over them in the womb. So sometimes we don't even understand some of the things. So what I, I think it's so important, Margo, what you said is about yielding as that thing comes up, as it starts to overtake us, as we start to feel the pain or we start to feel like out of control, when we start to feel that, it's like, okay, wait a second, There, this is something. So Lord, what is this something? Show me what this something is. Help me to deal with this something. Okay. And as soon as that memory, like you said, that memory comes up, it's you just say, okay, Jesus, come into this memory. Come into yeah. this memory. Be there and with me. Just like you were talking about that girl who didn't cry for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hearing the Lord speaking to me right now that there's a lot of you that have been afraid to feel. And you've just like, I'll give an example. As a teenager, I felt like I was crying too much in the presence of the Lord. And I started to shut it down. And I, I, I cry a lot in the presence of the Lord. When the Lord touches me, I'm such a crier and I love it. And then I repented for shutting that down. It started feeling like, you know, teenager. And I'm like, this is too much. I'm crying all the time. And, and, and then I just repented and got cleansed of it. And I just, I bless you to cry. I bless you to not be afraid of feeling, especially for men where you felt like, I don't want to feel, I don't want to cry in front of anybody. Jesus wept. The shortest scripture and verse in the whole Bible, Jesus wept. He loves when you cry and he stores every tear. Jesus enjoys your tears when it's unto him, not a not a depressed cry. I'm talking about crying unto the Lord and just allowing him to cleanse your heart of all the pain that you've held on to for all these years. Let those walls come down and enjoy crying to the Lord. It's beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing. When we cry in that place of intercession, tears, those tears are saving souls, melting down walls of other people's hearts. It's a powerful thing. And so use the weapon of tears. It's so precious to the Lord. Allow yourself to feel again. And a lot of people will say, oh, but it's too painful to face that memory. With Jesus, allow him to just cleanse you of all that pain. Don't be afraid to face that memory because Jesus is right there. A great cloud of witnesses are cheering you on. You're surrounded by heaven. The angels of the Lord are surrounding you. The Trinity, the Holy Spirit is right there inside of you, surrounding you. You could face anything with him. And I just speak healing to your heart today. I'm just feeling right now in the spirit, there's a lot of really broken hearts. In that memory right now, 
The Holy Spirit is bringing up a memory right now. Just let Jesus do all the work and release forgiveness like a river. Just forgive. I feel a lot of pain right now. There's people hurting so bad. Release forgiveness like a river. And just let Jesus turn that pain to peace until it's done. And then just receive forgiveness for taking in all that anger, the rage, the loneliness, whatever it is that you took in, just receive forgiveness Oh, in Jesus' name and renounce agreements that you've made with the enemy. Break that agreement. I break it in Jesus' name. I'm just agreeing with you. I come against that, all that heaviness, all the darkness that's been weighing you down. I speak freedom. It is not hopeless. That anxiety, the anxiousness, the worry, the fear about tomorrow, that is not hopeless. You're not stuck in that place. I break it off of you in Jesus' name, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You've forgiven, you've received forgiveness, you are free. And so just encounter the Lord in, where the pain was. Just let him flood you. Let him fill you right now to overflowing. He's the God of abundance. And he's speaking words of life over you. He has an incredible destiny. I just hear the Lord saying he wants me to remind you that you have an incredible destiny. And it's not just for all these other people that came from some healthy family, quote unquote, healthy family, where they had this beautiful upbringing. The Lord has an incredible destiny for you and your life is not a hopeless case. It's not too late for you. God is a God of new, uh, new beginnings. His mercy is new every morning. And so right now you are free of your past. You are not hooked by your past anymore. I just pull out the prophetically. It's just a prophetic act. I pull that hook of your past out of you. You are not held back by your past. I declare it over you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Whew. I don't know about you guys, but I felt it. Just saying, that was, that was powerful. That was powerful. That was powerful. And we give you all the glory. Absolutely. You are not inadequate. Jesus makes anybody adequate. He, God used a donkey in the Old Testament. He can use anybody. It's the Lord that makes you adequate. See, false humility is looking at yourself and saying, oh, but look, I, I don't talk enough. I'm not eloquent with my words or... I, I can't do this or that. My voice isn't beautiful enough. The Lord makes you adequate. True humility is looking at Jesus. Maturing in the Lord is saying, I'm dependent on God, fully dependent. I can do nothing in myself. The more I mature in the Lord, the more I realize I can do nothing without God. And I need him or I have nothing. I have nothing to offer you right now unless Jesus breathes on every word, unless he speaks through me. And I'm just his oracle. I'm just saying yes to God. And he's flowing through me. If God's not touching you right now, I have nothing to offer you. Margot Jones has nothing in myself, but I have everything to offer you when I allow God to flow through me. When he is breathing on my words, I have everything to offer you. And so it's God that makes you adequate. So stop waiting to be adequate enough in yourself. I just come against that false humility. That's a lie saying, oh, but look, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready enough. Look at Jesus. Look at him as your source. Be fully dependent on him. Acknowledge your dependency on God and know that you can do anything. You can see the, uh, the glory of God flow through you to overtake this whole planet. You can see this whole planet saved with the glory of the Lord just through your life. Believe for that. Believe for big things. That's true humility is believing that God can use you to be that superhero that he's called you to be and it's all him it's all him amen all right you're now speaking to me <laughs> now you're speaking to me because well, yeah well, I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you later but <laughs> thank you Lord. oh that's so funny that's god is so good he is cool. so good he is so good seriously now so here and i'm i'm sorry no, no, no. If you're flowing, go. Saying, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Come on. 
don't look at somebody else's life and say, oh, but they see so much in the spirit. They see so clearly. And look, I'm all the way behind. The Lord wants to free you of that right now. I just keep yeah. seeing the word compare. God is saying, don't compare yourself to the pastors that you see in your life or to Lisa Perna. Stop comparing yourself to everyone else. And just be free of that. That's such a waste of time. Jesus adores you. There is nobody that can replace that place in God's heart that, that's reserved for only you. It's an endless, eternal place. And it's reserved for you. It's reserved for you, Mary. It's reserved for you, Amanda. It's reserved for you, whatever your name is right now. Who God sees who you are. He knows you. He knows more about you than you ever could know about yourself. And he is obsessed with you. He's crazy about you. You are it for Jesus. He is obsessed. And so right now, the Lord wants you to stop saying, I wish I had that person's life. I wish I went to that prophetic school. I wish I had all this stuff under my belt. Instead, God's saying, be free of that right now. Know that I am in love with you and I am of and madly, madly in love with you. You are it for me for all eternity and nobody can ever replace you. You are the one that I want. I can't fill that place in my heart with anyone else. There's a place, an eternal place in my heart that's reserved for only you. So stop comparing yourself. It's only a waste of time. It's a distraction. Be free of that distraction right now. In Jesus' name, you are eternally loved. Yes, you messed up. Forget about that. Repent and move on. Look at Jesus. You're only wasting time. That's so precious. We have a short time here on earth. Even a hundred years, that's such a short time compared to eternity. Let's focus on the things that matter forever. You are looking away from Jesus when you look at your past mistakes, how weak you've been in yourself. Forget about that. You're wasting precious, weighty time. Look at Jesus and you will never waste your time looking at Jesus. He makes you adequate. No more comparing in Jesus' name. Be free of that. Amen. Woo. Come on, seriously, yeah. seriously. Oh, thank you. You Lord. are so your dad. <laughs> thank you, Lord. You are so your dad. Oh my the goodness. Best compliment. I love. Oh dad. yeah, because he's awesome. He's on Ser fire, and he's not yes. just on fire in the pulpit. He's on fire in his life. And yeah. He's been such an example for me, and I just want to encourage all of you that are parents. Be that example to your children. They're watching you. I watched my dad growing up. I was watching him and he lived like Jesus. He is such a man of integrity and holiness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I saw that example and it put the fear of God in me. And I said, I don't want to play around with sin because my dad is so like radical about sin. I mean, if anybody's radical about holiness and not giving into sin, it would be my dad. Yeah. And he lived like that all the time. And it, just set such high standards for me. So your kids are watching you. That your kids are watching when you don't give in to that anger and rage and yell at your children and, and beat on them or whatever different pulls that you have with your children. Your kids are watching you and it's never a waste of time showing them love and training them up in the way that they should go. Kids are so valuable. Mm. The Lord is into families. He's all about family. Oh, I feel a burning in my ears right now. Thank you, Lord. He is so about family. God created us to be his family. Come on. And so it's never a waste of time to just be with your family mm. and to just love your family. It's the most precious thing you can do. And God is all about love, not about just doing a bunch of works and thinking you're doing so-called ministry stuff. God is looking for love. Like Bob Jones, when he had that near-death experience, Jesus, his one question for him was, did you learn to love? Come on. God is asking you. He's not concerned with all the preaching engagements and all the different things that you've just done for him. But what, did you do it out of a place of love? Let mm. that be your highest goal, that everything you do is in love. And when you're loving your family, there is nothing sweeter to the Lord. 
That mm. is so precious. You want to see crazy amounts of eternal rewards released to your eternal account? Love your family. It is mm. never a waste of time. So Love good. the person God sends you, especially your family is so precious. We are sons and daughters. We are brother to Jesus. He's all about family, the wife, the bride of Christ. Yeah. Family so good. Is so precious to the Lord. So good. Okay. So if people want to get in touch with you, Margo, because they will, oh boy, will they? They, you got to read her. You got to read the things that she writes. It's such an incredible and anointed writer. So it's, it's uh, in Yeshua.org, correct? Yes. Okay. Or, that is uh, on Facebook in pursuit of the fire and then dash Margo Fishman Jones, just so you'll know that's me, but okay. In pursuit but, of fire. But if they go to into, if they go to in Yeshua.org, they yeah. can find your videos. They can yes. find the different blogs that you've written. They're like just incredible, incredible, passionate, passionate, passionate encounters that God wants to have with us because each of the things that you have written, it is almost as if God just like was reaching in and just talking to talking to me. And that is why I wanted to have you on because of the intimacy, the level of intimacy that you put into your writings and into your videos. It, it, you know, you can't fake that. You can't go to, to different places and fake that you can't because it, it's just exudes out of you. And I think that's, that is what's so beautiful and so passionate. So his fire does burn in you and it burns ever so brightly and everybody who has heard you speak today has heard the evidence has seen the evidence of how powerfully you burn you burn yeah seriously so this has been the, uh, I, I I'm I'm a little lost for words because some of the things that you hit on tonight were just so powerful so so powerful wow. thank you Lord. so so powerful and so so necessary it was so so necessary and i believe that there were a lot of people who got some of the healing that they've been crying out for i believe wow. that a lot of people got healed today a lot yeah. of people from things that that they wanted to have removed but they just they they just didn't know how and so because you stood in that place and you pulled some of that out, you were doing some serious surgery. You were doing some serious surgery on people's hearts. You were doing some serious surgery on people's minds and also on their spirits because this, this has been just such, Margo, I'm going to say it, but this was for such a time as this show. Wow. The timing of this show was impeccable from God, impeccable. Mm. Because well, I just want to say, Lamb of God, receive mm. the reward of your suffering. Yes. Jesus, you died for every heart to be healed. You died for every person watching this show right now Mom. to be totally free to experience your fire. That fire is for you. Just receive it now. Jesus, be glorified. Through this episode, I pray, God, for freedom to reign in every heart, in, in every person's life that's watching right now. And I just see chains coming loose right now where you have been bound for so many years right now. Jesus is cutting off those chains of bondage. He is the bondage breaker. He Mom. is doing what no man could ever do for you. Jesus Christ himself is right there, right now, right there with you. You are not alone. And the Lord is delivering us someone right now from suicidal spirits, suicidal thoughts right now, where you feel like, why am I even alive? I don't want to live anymore. And right now, Jesus is delivering you. Your life matters. We need you on this earth. And you are a person of great destiny. And you're called to bring so many free. And God sees you as great, as highly favored. You are chosen of the Lord. So, Lamb of God, receive the reward of your sufferings. You are ripped to shreds.
for us you love us so much the lord is in love with you he wants you to know it just see him dying on that cross he was unrecognizable you can even tell he's a man he was ripped to shreds with a crown of thorns pierced into his skull and he said you're worth it he said you are the joy set before him he says that your life you alone you're worth it to jesus you were the joy set before him that he was willing to die the most horrible, gruesome death. He said, yes, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I've got to do this because I've got to spend forever with you. He wants you. He doesn't just want your mom, your grandma who was praying for you all your life. He wants you. And he's calling your name. He hasn't skipped over you. He hasn't forgotten you. He wants you so bad. Come running to the lover of your soul right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Oof. Seriously now. Thank you, Will. Seriously. Unbelievable. What a... Uh, you got me speaking in tongues right now, so... Amen. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hit him with those sort of ah, shit on the That's another way to yield. Huge. Yeah. Yes, speaking in tongues, it. lifting yeah. holy hands unto the Lord. Mm, absolutely. Yield. Oh, surrender. Surrender. Oh, Speak in tongues if you feel this stuck. It, 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 Be Christ me, and interact me. with him. I'm telling you, yield. Oof. Let me tell you. Seriously. Hallelujah. Girl, you can preach. You can seriously preach. Seriously. This has been such a blessing to have you on. I think that every person who hears this, I think there's going to be testimonies. This is, this was a serious show. I just didn't understand how serious it was. Mm. I didn't, but I am telling you this, this was such a, for such a time as this show, because I think that there are so many people who needed to hear what you had to say to, um, to get free from some of the things that they've been bogged down with to release some of the things, surrender some things to yield to the father, to the Holy spirit, to, to feel his fire to feel his passion yeah wow it's, yeah just beautiful you're just yes. awesome you are just awesome thank you so much for coming on oh such an honor really thank you for inviting me absolutely absolutely and if you guys want to get in touch with margo you can go to in yeshua.org you can read her stuff you can also find her on facebook in in pursuit of the fire forward slash Margo Fishman Jones. So definitely check her out. Follow her on Facebook. Trust me, watch her videos, share, share the things that she writes with your friends, share, share, share. Sharing is caring. Care for your friends, love your friends, share her stuff because her stuff is truly anointed. You can feel the father's hand on each word she's typed. I'm telling you, it really, it spoke to me in, in such huge ways. And this show has blessed me beyond Thank what you. I can tell you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And you are so, uh, you are just such a treat. And I love your dad. So, <laughs> and it's like, and, and you need to, you need to come out to Jersey and you need to do a. I would well, love to. Yeah, we might, we might have to talk. Because I am going to be having another conference. Oh, okay. So we might we might have to talk. Yeah. That would be because, awesome. Uh -huh. And see my dad too. And see your dad too. Yep. I mean, because that that's worth the trip alone. Yep. <laughs> that and the jokes. Yeah, the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that and the jokes. That and the jokes. <laughs> that's it. All right, Margo. Thank you so much thank for coming you. on Touch by Prayer. Thank you guys for hanging in. I know it was a long show, but let me tell you something. Holy Spirit was in the house. And when Holy Spirit's in, you don't push him out. So I thank you so much for holding on. Thank you guys for being blessed. If this has blessed you, please share this with your friends. Seriously, this should be a show you share with people you love. Because I am telling you, it is getting people free. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just remember to go out and touch someone. Good night.